You've suffered from several sort of wide-ranging mental health um, uh, conditions and the, the first one happened when you were about 16 and then this began with anorexia. So, so what was the trigger for that? Um, I would say my anorexia was a whole range of issues really. Um, probably like the stress of school and everything and um, with exams and then like just being around like friends who you know would kind of like like everyone just wanted to like look slim it was kind of like the thing in the ta at the time and um, yeah it was just really reinforcing whenever people were saying oh you look like you've lost a bit of weight and then it just really went into a downward spiral where I was just always obsessing over weighing myself and the more the scales went down yeah. it was just like really and then that just became my life my whole life was stripped from me like I stopped socializing it was just that was just it, it well, was... at just the age of 17 you attempted suicide as we said you were sectioned for the first time you as you said you, your life was beginning to fall apart um, and then uh, so you, you, you fought through the anorexia and then that developed into trichotillomania which is the pulling plucking out of, of, of hair um, and and then that moved into the realms of the makeup didn't mm -hmm. it how, how did that begin to manifest itself um, well I struggled really bad with acne as well and um, for like about over 10 years and um, so I was putting on makeup to kind of like hide from a that, mask. yeah, yeah mm. a mask. So, so what? I mean, what are we talking about? Because lots of people put makeup on in the morning to make themselves look nice, but this is was very extreme. So your routine, I guess, of putting on makeup because you, you had to be at work by six. So what time did you wake up? <laughs> yeah, like literally, I was up at four, and if my like acne was even worse, like it could have been quarter to four. Like it's absolutely absurd looking back on now that I was just spending an hour and a half on my face. But it was that was just my routine. Like I didn't even bat an eyelid at it. But like it really infuriated me, like that I was wasting all this time putting makeup on. But like it's just what I felt I had to do. Very to, like, heavy fake tan as well. Um, yeah, like like I, if tanorexia is a thing, like I had that <laughs> because. <laughs> and also, it got to the point where you weren't even taking it off. Then it wasn't making a difference to, to your skin whether or not you take your makeup on, uh, take makeup off, or, le or leave it on. So you were sleeping in your makeup, sort of Sometimes, patching it yeah. up a little bit the next day. Yeah because um, it was a whole big regime to take it off as well and like putting creams on and like just honestly like it just it was such a waste of all that time you know and I felt so unworthy and disgusting without it like I would have avoided mirrors without makeup on um, and your like, boyfriend your boyfriend at the time he, he didn't see you without makeup on no like well if he did like I would have been like literally hiding my face like it's so embarrassing to think mm. of you know and, and for, your, for you personally as well, at this time, your, your depression peaked around this time and again, you, you attempted to take your own life and, and you asked to be sectioned the, the, the first time which you did and you were released from that and the treatment, the combination of, of sort of being at home and it wasn't working, it just, it just wasn't working, it was, getting, it was getting a lot worse for you and it was the third attempt at your own life four months later that, that you were then sectioned again, this time against your will, but yeah. you needed to. And and this was the big turnaround point for you, wasn't it? So what happened that time that was different? Um, well, after being released, um, because I was only in hospital then, in November last year for two weeks, and I didn't like I was sectioned because like I knew like I knew it wasn't the right place for me I was going into a mixed ward like I hadn't left the house and you know months I didn't want to be around people like I knew like I needed to be like away and like to get myself better and um, so like I was finally released and yeah able to like work on myself and like then so like I started blogging like in March this year when I finally like felt like ready like to go out and face the world again and like I literally did like hide away Away for months like so I couldn't speak to anyone. what was it? What got you there then? What, what, was there, is it a light bulb moment? Was it a slow burn where you began to feel comfortable in your own skin and confident with yourself? Um, yeah I suppose because like I wasn't like going out like I just wasn't putting makeup on then and like working on me and like figuring out who I was what I wanted to do with my life and um, I just sort of felt like more value I knew who I was like finally like I had like a purpose and mm -hmm. like with blogging and everything like I felt like I just needed? had this you needed purpose. A purpose yeah like I just never knew how it was like the thought of someone asking me who are you what do you want to do with your life like I literally would have had heart palpitations <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah I think it's a thing a lot of people struggle with you know there, there isn't a diagnosis for a makeup <clears throat> uh, addiction because that forms a much bigger, bigger. Makeup picture doesn't it absolutely 
you said trichotillomania, so hair pulling, for people who don't know, um, that actually falls into the OCD spectrum. Body dysmorphic disorder, again, kind of a subcategory of OCD, so yeah. not classic, but nonetheless has lots of similarities. Yeah. I imagine when you were talking then that you suffered from really high anxiety as well, just yeah. the way you were describing it. So even though we couldn't say that she had an absolute diagnosis in one area, you fall into several categories, don't you, from eating yeah. disorders to high anxiety, OCD, BDD, all of those areas. Mm -hmm. The most important thing, Philip, is what you know to them which is that idea of purpose mm. finding a place where you could have the cathartic experience because we talked earlier on so I was really excited and interested to listen to your recovery and one of the things you were talking about actually was the fact that you didn't really get any therapy you actually had yeah. to do all the work yourself mm. so to some degree it's incredible that you've managed to be free of your eating disorder and all these other associated disorders for quite a long time. Yeah. What would you say has been the major thing that's changed that direction for you? Because for me, that's what's really compelling about your story. Um, yeah, I suppose I've always been like very self-motivated, but like, well, gratitude, I'd say like, I just started writing like down like three things every day that was like positive and like making a gratitude journal and just like really, yeah, like just focusing on the positive. Like I always say, like positive mental attitude will get you everywhere.